Hello, my name is Anna. I am one of the three co-founders of Female Invest, and we are an edtech company with the goal of closing the financial gender gap. Today we do that by educating women on how to manage their money, but soon we'll be launching a trading platform as well. Just a bit of background information on why I'm here before I'm diving into why this is so important and exactly what we're doing at Female Invest and where we're going. So I co-founded Female Invest with Emma and Camilla, my two co-founders. We all come from backgrounds where no one talks about money, no one invests, and we all had to learn the hard way when we were teenagers and we suddenly got an interest in the topic. Um, since then, a lot has happened. We have co-authored two best-selling books. We've won the world's largest startup competition. We've raised around $10 million in funding. And we've built a product with paying users in 89 countries. And yesterday, I signed the deal to buy a trading platform. Um, we were also in Y Combinator and on the Forbes 30 under 30 list within finance as the first Nordic women ever. And I always start out with my CV because whenever I go on stage and present this idea, people always assume it's like a little hobby project in my mom's basement. Um, I, was sitting, uh, I was at a really nice uh, dinner yesterday and I was sitting next to this VC partner and I told him about Female Invest and he was like, wow, that's so great. We also donate to charity. And I was like, yeah, that's not really what we do. What we do at Female Invest is that we try to close the financial gender gap. And the way we do that is by educating women on how to make the most of their money and how to begin investing. Because for us, this is not just about money. This is about freedom, it's about independence, and it's about the ability to live life on your own terms. We do this through multiple ways. The biggest one is our online platform. When women sign up, they get access to all the learning content they need to make the most of their money, webinars, courses, everything. Then we have a community on social media of over 250,000 women, and we work with some of the largest companies in the world, having global partnerships with companies like UBS, Nasdaq, Facebook, Google, McKinsey, and so on. So yeah, our business model has two legs today. B2C is by far the most scalable, and that is the key focus as well. But before I dive into our journey and how we got to where we are today, I just want to pause and focus on the problem that we are solving. Because today, there is 195 countries in the world, and not a single one has achieved financial gender equality. That means there's not a single country in the world today where women have the same freedom, the same independence, and the same opportunities as men do. And this is a problem not just for women, but for all of us. Whenever I hear these numbers, I feel like there are some questions we need to ask. Do we lack skilled female labor? Because that would be a very good explanation. No, we don't. In Western countries, women are overrepresented in higher education, so that's definitely not the reason why. Well, then surely the, mum the numbers must be improving. Not really, at least not fast enough. According to the World Economic Forum, it will take 257 years to close the financial gender gap, and that number is only increasing after the pandemic, and every time that we see financial volatility that we do now, women are hit harder. Then the last question we need to ask is, have we acknowledged the problem? I know the people in this room, we're probably smart, we work in the area, we probably do acknowledge that there is a problem that needs solving. But when we ask general populations, the majority do not think that we have a problem with gender bias, which I think is really scary. So that's why we exist in Female Invest, and that's a problem that we want to solve. This is not a company against men, we build it with a lot of men as well, have a lot of male employees, uh, we just target women. When we started out, we never intended for this to be a company. I just met my co-founders at university, and we immediately bonded over this passion for investing and this passion to get more women into the space. 
And the first time that we ever met, we got the idea to start this little club of women discussing stocks. We imagined it would be like 10, 15 women getting drunk and talking about their investments. Um, so we launched a Facebook page. We just called it Female Invest, so women would know it was for them. And the first day that we launched, more than 400 women signed up. And then the ball kept rolling. What was really interesting is that the majority of women signing up didn't know anything about investing. They wanted us to teach them. So what we started doing is that we started hosting these educational events. We started partnering with companies because we couldn't physically fit all the women uh, into the rooms. And within the first year and a half, over 25,000 women had physically attended our events. And that's in Copenhagen alone, 25,000 women. It eventually got to the point where we would post an event on Facebook it would sell out in minutes, and then there would be this secondary market where women would sell the tickets at overprice. And that's when we knew that we were really onto something. Because while we were doing this, all of the banks were hosting women's brunches and women's events, having just empty rooms. So we looked at each other. We all signed, at that point, contracts with our dream jobs. I was supposed to go work at McKinsey. We ripped those contracts and we started Female Invest as a company. We had zero money to start it with, no network, no experience. It was just purely out of the passion and driven by the demand that we experienced. We launched our first online platform with $2,000, which I think is pretty crazy. We then bootstrapped the company for a full year up to seven full-time employees. Meanwhile, we won the world's largest startup competition and we got an equity-free check of $100,000, use that to hire some more people, get a salary, and eventually get to our first funding round of $1.6 million. Getting funding was, and still is, I think, a really difficult thing. It's a difficult thing for all founders, but it's especially difficult if you are a woman or if you are a person of color. I think I don't need to elaborate. We all know the statistics, and after having raised money, I'm really not surprised uh, of that. Um, we then took that money and we relaunched the entire platform. Like the first platform we launched was the most scrappy product you would have ever seen. It was a WordPress site that would crash whenever more than 20 people were online at the same time. And we got to 10,000 paying monthly subscribers on that platform, which to this day I still don't really get, to be honest. Um, the growth just kept going, went super well. Uh, we joined Y Combinator last summer. And on the back of that, we raised an additional funding round of $6.5 million. Now, when I made this slide, we had paying members in 83 countries. We're actually up to 89 countries now, which is really exciting. It's moving super fast. Um, where we are now is that we need to do two things. Number one, we need to scale, as all startups do. We're already growing fast. We need to grow even faster. We come from the Nordics, but now we set up offices in London as well. I just moved to London, which is uh, quite a big thing for me. It took six months to get a visa. Uh, I have zero friends in London, but uh, let's see how it goes. My boyfriend was really cute. He was like, oh, we should host a housewarming party. And I was just like, for who? Um, but yeah, so we need to uh, scale. Uh, the UK is our fastest growing market, so we're just doubling down on that right now. But then apart from scaling, we also need to expand the business. Because building an ed tech company is really nice, but we want to do a lot more. Because the problem with engaging women in the world of finance is not just about education. It's about a lack of women in the financial industry. It's about the products in the financial industry not being built by women, not taking their demands into account. We see that both in the more established uh, world, among the more established banks, but we also see it in fintech the way it is today. I don't know if any of you can mention just one woman who has built a trading platform. I can't mention a single one. I know Starling Bank has a female founder, but I don't know any women who've done it. So uh, what we want now is to uh, launch a trading platform. 
I'm not lying when I say that we get between 50 and 100 requests per week from women asking us if we have a trading platform, when we'll have it, uh, coming back to us after we send them out to the ones that already exist, saying that it doesn't have exactly what they are looking for. Building a trading platform isn't easy, but nothing on this journey has been. Um, so as I started out with saying, we just acquired a trading platform as of yesterday, which was really exciting. I signed the deal when I was sitting next to the stairs over there. Um, and we hired the CTO uh, to work in our company. We have around 30 full-time employees now. So we want to launch trading, waiting for the markets to get a bit better. We raised a bit more funding in the spring, but now we just want to ramp up um, and do a Series A within the coming year. All of this is driven by a passion. It's driven by a passion to help more women, to empower more women, and essentially to make the world a better place. Because imagine what the world will look like when more women have more money. Money to support companies we like, money to support causes we like, and money to never ever be dependent on anyone or anything. That's what we want with Female Invest, and that's why we've been working day and night for the last three years, and we are not done until women have the same financial possibilities in every single country in the world. I'll be working for a really long time, as you can probably hear. That was the time I had, a bit about Female Invest, while we're doing the things that we're doing. If you want to get in touch, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm Anna Sophie from Female Invest. You can see me on the program. We'd always love to partner, and then I just want to say, Thank you.